Welcome, kind listener. My name is Gentle Fox. You may not know me now, but by the end of this masterpiece, you will, and I trust you'll think of me as an old friend. What you'll be hearing tonight is an excerpt from our Twitch stream. I hope you'll enjoy that extra ambiance and my soft-spoken voice as we explore Leo Tolstoy's classic Anna Karenina. Chapter 21 For the grown-up's tea, Dolly came from her room. Stepan Arkadyevich did not come out. He must have left his rice room through the back door. I'm afraid you'll be cold upstairs, Dolly remarked, addressing Anna. I'd like to move you down, and we'll be near each other. Oh, now please don't worry about me. Anna replied, peering into Dolly's eyes and trying to make out whether or not there had been a reconciliation. There's more light here, her sister-in-law replied. I tell you, I sleep always and everywhere like a dormouse. What's this about? asked Stepan Arkadyevich, coming out of his study and addressing his wife. By his tone, Kitty and Anna both understood at once that a reconciliation had taken place. I want to move Anna down here, but the curtains must be changed. No one else knows how to do it. I must do it myself, Dolly replied, turning to him. God knows, are they completely reconciled, thought Anna, hearing her cold and calm tone. Oh, enough, Dolly. You keep making difficulties, said her husband. Well, I'll do it if you like. Yes, thought Anna. They must be reconciled. I know how you'll do it, Dolly answered. You'll tell Matve to do something impossible. Then you'll leave, and he'll get it all wrong. And a habitual mocking smile wrinkled Dolly's lips as she said it. Complete, complete reconciliation. Complete, thought Anna. Thank God. And rejoicing that she'd been the cause of it, she went over to Dolly and kissed her. Not at all. Why do you despise me and Matve so? Stepan Arkadyevich said, smiling barely perceptibly and turning to his wife. All evening, as usual, Dolly was slightly mocking towards her husband, and Stepan Arkadyevich was content and cheerful, but just enough so as not to suggest that, having been forgiven, he had forgotten his guilt. At half-past nine, an especially joyful and pleasant family conversation around the evening tea-table of the Oblonskys was disrupted by an apparently very simple event, but this simple event for some reason seemed strange to everyone. As they talked about mutual Petersburg acquaintances, Anna quickly stood up. "'I have her in my album,' she said, "'and incidentally I'll show you my Zeroja,' she added with the smile of a proud mother." Towards ten o'clock, when she usually said good night to her son, and often put him to bed herself before going to a ball, she felt sad to be so far away from him. And whatever they talked about, she kept referring in, or returning in thought to her curly-headed Seryosha. She wanted to look at his picture and talk about him. Taking advantage of the first pretext, she got up and, with her light, resolute step, went to fetch the album. The stairs that led up to her room began on the landing of the big, heated front stair. Just as she was leaving the drawing room, there was a ring at the door. Who could that be? said Dolly. It's too early for me, and too late for anyone else, observed Kitty. Probably someone with papers, Stepan Arkadyevich put in. And as Anna was crossing the landing, a servant came running up the stairs to announce the visitor, while the visitor himself stood by the lamp. Anna, looking down, at once recognized Vronsky, and a strange feeling of pleasure suddenly stirred in her heart, together with a fear of something. He stood without removing his coat, and was taking something from his pocket. Just as she reached the center of the landing, he raised his eyes, saw her, 
and something ashamed and frightened appeared in his expression. Inclining her head slightly, she went on, and behind her heard the loud voice of Stepan Arkadyevich inviting him to come in, and the soft, gentle, and calm voice of Vronsky declining. When Anna came back with the album, he was no longer there, and Stepan Arkadyevich was saying that he had dropped in to find out about a dinner they were giving the next day for a visiting celebrity. And he wouldn't come in for anything. He's somehow strange, Stepan Arkadyevich added. Kitty blushed. She thought that she alone understood why he had called by and why he had not come in. He was at our house, she thought. Didn't find me, and thought I was here. But he didn't come in because he thought it was late, and Anna's here. They all exchanged glances without saying anything, and began looking through Anna's album. There was nothing either extraordinary or strange in a man calling at his friend's house at half-past nine to find out the details of a dinner that was being planned and not coming in. But they all thought it strange. To Anna especially, it seemed strange and not right.